hard house even there. Even even better. Better. Your phone's too heavy. Ooh, sandbag. That's very funny. Uh, I was about to say that in this. What is that? How does that help? Just oh, is it? Well, not necessarily to clip it on, but at least to give it something to lean on. Yes. Good. You guys can go. You guys go ahead. All right, here we go. Thanks so much for letting me borrow this bottle, by the way. So when you were done with this, you were going to recycle it, right? You weren't going to put it in this bin. This bin it goes out into the ocean, kills some fish, or goes to the landfill. This is the bad bin. You were going to put it in this bin. This is the bin where it gets recycled. It's environmentally friendly. This is the good bin. But what actually happens when you put it in this bin? Let's find out. So from that bin, Companies such as Waste Management comes, picks it up, takes it to one of their local recycling facilities. And then from there, it goes all the way down to Garland, Texas, to, where, to a plastic sorting facility where all the plastics are sorted based on their different types. And then... It goes to the port of Houston, where it's bailed and placed on a ship that sails through the Panama Canal to Taiwan, where it gets made into textiles. And from Taiwan, it gets shipped all the way to the port of LA in California, where it's then made into jackets for Columbia. And then we go to Portland, Oregon, to the distribution center for, for Columbia. Then, after that, we go to the local retailer, such as TD Ski and Sports, just three miles off the campus. And then, a TCU student finally buys this jacket. Congratulations, you've completed the loop. Hey, that only took 19,000 miles, emitted half its weight in carbon dioxide, and that was for the good bit. What if there was a better way? What if we can eliminate those 19,000 miles and reduce that carbon dioxide emission? Allow me to introduce closed loop plastic. Here's how it works. We take the plastic bottle, we bring it to, let's say, the 3D printing lab, then they take that plastic, then they use it for whatever project they have. So, less than a mile. Oh, but in, in total, it traveled less than a mile with less than the, or zero with zero carbon dioxide emission. So, Walter, we can't just shove a water bottle into a 3D printer. How do we do this? That's very right. Well, let me explain. So, there's a fab lab here at TCU, and the lab is run by Brad. So, what would Brad do if he had our system? Brad would take the bin, throw in the plastic bottles into our system, then out comes a spool that can be used for 3D printing. So in a sense, we go from bottle, then to spool, then to a 3D printed object. So we've been talking a lot about 3D printing. Why? Well, the 3D printing market, is, or 3D printing industry is expected to be a $30 billion industry by 2022. And right now the compact annual growth rate is at 26.2%. Closed loop plastic doesn't need to tackle the whole market. In fact, the only market, we're, or the primary market we're tackling are universities. Why universities? Well, universities have the highest concentration of 3D printing activity worldwide. At UC Irvine, we have over 100 3D printers. And last year alone, we spent over $50,000 on these plastic spools. So, well, how do we make a business out of this? Let's go back to Brent. Right now, Brad spends $35 per spool of printable material. We're gonna put our system in Brad's facility for free. All Brad has to do is pay $35 right at market rate for the first 20 spools that Brad makes. Now here's the great part. After Brad makes those first 20 spools, any spool he makes after that only costs him $5. For some scale, UC Irvine goes through 120 spools a month. That means 100 of those spools only cost $5. That'll save UCI and Brad thousands of dollars over the course of a year. Now we talked a lot about how Brad's gonna save money. How are we gonna make it? So in year one, we're gonna take a loss of $200,000. This loss is to keep, our, uh, keep with our lean startup methodology. We're only gonna put out 12 systems, really debug those systems and get ready for production. Then in year two, we're gonna make 120 new systems and clear a profit of $300,000. Now year three is where we really ramp up production and that's where now we're making 300 new systems, a total of 432 in circulation, and we clear a profit of $1.9 million. Now this is totally feasible growth, but it's gonna take some work. So we've partnered with a few companies to help us out. 
We partnered with our local 3D printer manufacturer, Airwolf 3D. We partnered with a few environmental nonprofits such as Sustainable Surf, Straw Free, and the Earth Island Institute. We've also partnered with a company you may have heard of called Starbucks. They're going to help us promote the idea of taking those plastic lids on your coffee and turning that into a reusable material. Now, we've also been working on our customer base. We talked about those 12 systems earlier. We've actually identified 12 schools and we've talked to all of them and they're very interested to put our system into their facilities. Now we've talked about who we've worked with and who we're going to sell to. Who are we up against? Right now, most of the plastics, there's no competition directly with our system. No one makes a system like ours. However, there are over 50 filament manufacturers and retailers around the world. How are we going to compete with those manufacturers and retailers? Three simple things. One, we're local. You can make the filament where you use it. Two, it's simple. It goes from waste to system to spool. And three, it's on demand and customizable. You can make filament when you need it and, with what, and how you want it. So you can take whatever material you want, make it into plastic, and you can take whatever color you want and make it into that plastic as well. No longer having to go on Amazon, buy a bunch of spools of plastic you don't need or want, and wait days for it to get to you. Now, Alden, what are we doing right now to make this a reality? Well, right now we currently have a working prototype. So a quick sidebar, should I point to the system? All right. we, we currently have a working prototype shown right below us. So on this, oh. we've successfully taken plastic waste from both 3D printing and conventional plastic such as the water bottle. Now, on the screen, you can see that our system is operating, and we're going to go from right to left. So on the right, you can see that we're feeding um, material in it, then out, it's melted, and then it comes out in a wire-like fashion, and it's spooled. So right now, we're also working with UCI's legal team to build a patent portfolio of, over, of about 14 different patents about, around the system. Now, none of this would be possible without our dedicated group of artists and engineers who have committed thousands of hours to the system. Will and I are the co-founders, but really it's a team that <clears throat> is the backbone of, assist, of the process. Now we, all, we also have an amazing group of advisors whose expertise lie in green business and finance to ensure that disposal of plastics is a business that is sustainable, but also healthy for the planet. We would like to especially thank the executive director of the Speculative Prototyping Lab, Jesse Jackson, for housing our project. They have graciously provided over $100,000 in funding for closed plastics. And currently, we are seeking $300,000 to move forward with our pilot year of 12 systems. So Will, what does this all really mean? Years ago, we went from the bad bin to a better bin. Closed loop plastics wants to give us the best bin we can use here on campuses. We're going to get rid of that 19,000 miles of travel, and we're going to get rid of all that carbon dioxide that we emit. Six months ago, our team came together, knocked our heads together, and tried to figure out how are we going to solve the problem of taking waste, making it into usable material. Two months ago, it worked. We took this cup, made it into this spool, and then printed it into that boat. Now that boat is not just a symbol of us closing the loop, it's also a symbol of how we're gonna keep our hopes and dreams for a healthy and happy planet afloat. Thank you so much, my name's Will Amos. And I'm Aldrin Lupuson. We are Closed Loop Plastics. Very good. You're at 8.10, so you're way